Hi everyone, my name is Adam Fish. I'm an associate professor at the University of New South Wales. And so for the last several years, I have been conducting fieldwork and personal experiments into drone-based marine conservation. I've worked with people flying drones through the exhale of whales for health checks in Australia and Mexico, and other such direct action activists such as Sea Shepherd who uses drones to catch poachers. All of these marine conservationists and ocean activists believe that monitoring with sensing technologies such as small affordable non-military drones can be beneficial for managing threats to endangered species. Several academic geographers disagree however with their assessment that drones can be beneficial for stopping extinction. These academics encourage conservationists to move away from policing and surveillance, laws and their enforcement, and instead focus on the definition of poaching, how it affects local people and contributes to militarization. Extinction, in this calculation, is a social not a criminal problem. Conservation technologies such as helicopters, camera traps, drones, smart fences, rifles, and the like are unnecessary, distracting, and harmful props in a semiotic struggle for fundraising attention, many of these academics argue. Conservation should not be mitigated with technicity that is, technologies of vision, tracking, and enforcement, but with economic welfare and educational justice, or so the argument goes. For these many critics, drones have totalizing capacities, earth transcending mobility, terrifying autonomy, and artificial intelligence capable of identifying and ultimately controlling people and other animals. But based on my experience and my observation and working with marine conservationists and activists around the world, drones have few of these overarching capacities. Far from the god trick of seeing everything from nowhere, the drone's mobility and vision is not dominating, but dictated by situated praxis, that is, prone to elemental disturbances and technological inefficiencies, which often lead to failure, distortions, and mission compromise. So I call the protracted biopolitical control, which ocean drones do afford, I call this kind of control blue governmentality. Blue governmentality is a mode of multi-species care and control that is circumscribed by elemental turbulence, technical maladaptions, and human self-interest. The following case study of Chinese shark fin poaching in Timor-Leste in 2017 explores these elemental and legal limits of blue governmentality, which is my theory of the care control nexus in ocean cultures. So here's the story. In early February 2017, Sea Shepherd received drone footage from a female diver from Timor-Leste. The anonymous pilot usually flew her drone to catch fleeting glimpses of blue whales as they migrated past Dili, the nation's capital. But in this video, she documented a Chinese fleet transferring, or what they call transshipping, sharks to a vast refrigerated fishing vessel, or reefer, a mere 250 meters off the island country's north coast. This was the Fu Wan Yu fleet, including the reefer, the Fu Wan Yu Leng 999. These fisherfolk are chronic offenders of international fishing laws.
Essentially, they're pirates. Soon after receiving the drone evidence, the police forces of Timor-Leste, which we'll call the PNTL, and two officers from the Australian Fisheries Management Authority boarded the Fu Wan Yu vessels, commencing a three-day-long inspection. On board were as many as 43 tons of sharks, many endangered. The Fu Wan Yu had authority from Timor-Leste to fish in these waters, but not in the way they were, nor for these fish. The government quickly surmised that they had violated Timor-Leste law, violated transshipment, endangered species, and national fishing regulations. Sea Shepherd and other watchers were certain that a conviction would be forthcoming for these notorious poachers. They wanted them off the water, their ships impounded, fines given, and the fishers sent to China. But this was not to be. Further adventures awaited these fishing pirates. Timor-Leste let the fleet sail with no suspension of their rights to fish in their sovereign waters. This decision was to be significant for another small maritime country and its fish. So the Fu Wan Yu fleet continued shark fishing, sailing 17,000 kilometers east to Ecuador. After leaving Timor-Leste with impunity and 43 tons of fro frozen shark caucuses, the gargantuan reefer, the Fu Wan Yu 999, was identified inside the, inside the Galapagos National Park. But they made a mistake. They left the vessel's automatic identification system on. It beamed its location to park authorities. And on August 13, 2017, Ecuador seized the vessels, and with it, 300 tons of fish, most of them sharks, including endangered hammerheads and threatened silky sharks. This tonnage equates to roughly 48,000 dorsal, pelvic, and pectoral shark fins to be traded in gray markets in Asia, where it is an expensive status symbol food. The Ecuadorians were less lenient than the Timorese. Ecuador imprisoned some of the crew on sentences of one to four years. The massive reefer ship was impounded, and they were given a $5.9 million fine. So with astounding mendacity, the remainder of the fleet sailed back into maritime Timor-Leste. On September 5, 2017, Sea Shepherd documented the Fu Wan Yu ships soaking their nets yet again and pulling in their catch. With armed members of the PNTL, Sea Shepherd began their operation with a drone flight. Gary Stokes flew the drone about 15 meters above the foredeck of the Fu Wan Yu 9608. Through the drone monitor, Stokes focused his attention on a crew member in a gray hoodie who was pulling in nets. As he cracked the skulls of netted sharks, he looked at the drone and appeared to laugh. Stokes thought to himself that when he, when he boards the Fu Wan Yu 9608, quote, if I see that guy, I'm just going to, uh, I want to kill him. He keeps looking over at us and smiling. I thought he was just enjoying killing sharks. He wasn't really a flavor of the month for me, Stokes told me. Armed with GoPros attached to their heads, a police escort, and a drone flying above, quote, so we could have eyes above just in case anybody was going to come out with a gun, Stokes told me. They boarded all 15 of the Fu Wan Yu vessels. On deck, Stokes separated this guy from the rest of the crew and interrogated him. As they spoke, Stokes discovered that he, like his wife, was Filipino. They chatted and quickly built trust. He confessed that in the Philippines, they would be arrested for the amount of coral they were destroying. Stokes was impressed, thinking, wow, this guy isn't a, the monster I thought he was. He was actually quite compassionate. He was actually an engineer. At the end of their discussion, the whistleblower asked Stokes if he got his message. Stokes had to confess he had not. Stokes and crew went back to the Ocean Warrior. Two hours later, the videographer came upstairs and said to Stokes, Gary, you want to have a look at this? The whistleblower identified a surveillance drone in the sky, looked around to see if the other crew members and the captain on the bridge were watching him. Then he bent over, laid his hammer down, and with his finger spelled on a spelled out on the deck in English, 
please come. He communicated an intimate plea to the drone and its operator. Just before the drone flew over the ship, they had landed a massive hammer hammerhead, and he wanted Sea Shepherd to find the incriminating evidence of the killing of this protected fish. Quote, incredible. Talk about sending chills down your spine. The whole campaign started because of a drone, Stokes confessed to me. Later, the whistleblower continued his undercover work, collecting images of the Chinese crew, throwing overboard hammerheads and sending them to Stokes. Under the deck, 10 to 15,000 shark corpses lay frozen. They were, they were targeting sharks, which they were not permitted to do. And yet, after a nine-month investigation, the boats, the crew, and even the millions of dollars worth of shark bodies sailed home for China. A payment of 100,000 American dollars from an anonymous source was sufficient to spring these pirates. So critics of conservation contend that conservation drones are yet another technology of biopolitics, attempting to artificially maintain natural wildlife populations. They sometimes argue that conservationists are embroiled in a, quote, politics of hysteria, wherein violence against animals and ranger is, quote, exaggerated. Conservation drones concretize a loop of human harm and techno-militarization. So goes the discursive reading by conservation geographers. Focused on the actual and contingent work of activists, this presentation offers a different conservation drone, one that is less a means of securitization and more an imperfect tool for marine flourishing. The Fu Wanyu's fleet and their flagrant escapade almost failed. Confrontational conservationists and police collaborators gathered evidence via a drone and a forensic search and seizure. Ecuador elected to fine and arrest crew and captain. Timor-Leste awarded a fishing license to a documented criminal and twice let them go with tons of sharks in their hold. Drone mobilities provided by technicity and elementality come together to produce compelling evidence, but ultimately a miscarriage of blue governmentality. Its technicity allows for the collection of incriminating evidence, but what the courts do with that evidence is another issue. In this case, the drone generated the conditions for difficult intimacy across economic and political divides. It mediated the crossing of ideological and elemental boundaries. This presentation has introduced enforcement, punishment, and corruption as aspects of blue governmentality and its subversion. With these traditional forms of legal and political power muting the flourishing made possible by drone technicity, however, the inhumane world of technological conservation, which the cultural geographers warn us about, is not to be. Conservation's objective is not saving humans, but other species. But this is not happening. The technology nor the law save sharks from future netting and de-finning. No deterring punishment was given in Timor-Leste. Despite the compelling drone-derived evidence, the Fu Wan Yu pirates sailed for home. The elementally and legally contingent efficiency of drone conservation is not the drone depicted in literature critical of conservation and its technologies. There, we witness a drone with absolute power to militarize conservation and even representation itself. A more humble drone, in my opinion, is actually the more honest drone. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't be there.